another video folks uh, five minute Friday today we all know it's not gonna be five minutes I waffle on too much for these five minute things but I'll give it my best go hope you've been outside enjoying some of the nice weather it's lush again isn't it it's really taking the mic all this weather we're not really you know allowed to be out doing what we want to be doing uh, and it's been wall to wall sunshine hasn't it? it's only April I've been watering the garden already madness anyway five minute Friday it doesn't start till I start on the subject so I'm okay I'm in good time at the moment Last week I did this on the four Ds of navigation, so I thought I'd, I'd smash out another navigation type one, right? Uh, and this one is like navigational techniques. So the four Ds, or you know, five Ds, some people prefer that, gives you the structure. But what's within that structure? How do you achieve it? Uh, and this is where these bits come in, right? So I'll, I'll go through these. And they're not, it's not an exhaustive list. There's flipping loads of navigational techniques out there. And actually, I'm not even going to say what is one of my favourite ones, if favourite, because it's a little bit geeky. See if you can guess what it is in the comments below. Um, and just you know, chuck any others that you really like in there as well, because uh, you know we've all got our little tactics that work for us. Um, but without further ado, first one, aiming off, right? And what I'm going to do at various points, I might try and edit some stuff in so you can see the map and what I'm talking about a little bit. It's a bit maybe beyond me, that one, but we we'll, we'll might give that a go. But yeah, aiming off is the first one. Aiming off, right? Imagine we're aiming for a stream junction. And we're talking about poor visibility type work in all of these, really, because navigating in good weather, well, let's face it, it's pretty easy. You go to that peak, you go to that coal, all that kind of stuff. In poor visibility, be that night or mist and fog or, you know, uh, whiteouts in the winter, that's when it becomes hard. And hitting this stream junction when you can't see it might be a tricky one. So you might have to do like a bearing and a pacing. So we're walking on that bearing and maybe we drift off to one side and we don't know which side because we've hit the stream, but we want the junction is the junction upstream or downstream. Well, we don't know. We can work it out, but it's going to take you a bit of time and effort, isn't it? And we want to make these things as sort of low stress and as easy as possible. So why don't we aim off? Let's just for example in this one, why don't we aim upstream by 50 meters, do our bearing and pacing, hit that stream. Now, if we're off by a little bit, it doesn't matter really because we're on that stream and we know it's downstream to hit our target. So when I get to the main one, I know that I'm approximately 50 meters up from my actual target. Well, then I pace down 50 meters and I get to my junction. And it's just giving yourself more chance of success, which is what all of these tactics are about. Okay. Next one, dog legging. Uh, years ago, I was in Scotland with my mate Mike and we were on Craig Meggie. We'd done a winter climb up there and the weather was atrocious. Our route was on the sheltered side, but we knew it would be like 60 mile an hour winds at the top, loads of hail and stuff blowing around. Uh, and there was um, just before we topped out, we we knew we had to get from A to B. But in the way of that is a massive cliff. So we had to do A to B to C and going around that cliff. And the, I've never been in such poor visibility. You could honestly hardly see your feet. So what we did right, is we went from our starting point A we took a bearing and we walked 600 meters on that bearing to a point B, right? And then we shot off to the other way on a different bearing to point C, another 600 meters. And we got to that cairn that we were after. It was ace, really. It feels like quite satisfying when you when it works like that, especially in those conditions. So what we had done is we had dog-legged around that cliff because obviously cliffs are dangerous. We can't walk up and down that cliff. It's a monster. It doesn't have to be as exciting as cliffs, though. It could just be, you know, a lake, a boggy area, whatever it might be, just area you can't go through. So you've got to dog leg around something. Good one, that one. I like this next one. Uh, it's thinking with your feet. And I like it because it's kind of, it's an easy one to multitask with. Point B that your is your target in this instance. You know that just before point B, the ground starts to rise up. So you can be plodding along, let's just say on the flat, chatting to your group, having a nice time, educating them, talking rubbish, whatever it is. But then the ground starts to go up and you can feel that under your feet. You know, it's an easy one. We've all felt it, You're not even really paying attention. And that is a little memory jog to go, all oh, right, we've got a switch on now. So it can be any change in angle, can't it? Downhill, it changes to flat, whatever. But thinking with your feet is just a nice one that you can multitask with quite nicely. So build that into part of your description from the four Ds. I think that's a good idea. Attack points, right? Especially on your mountain leader assessment, you'll be going to some really small features at some point, not like every leg, but for some of them, for sure. So imagine you've got like a 600 meter leg to do and you're leading it 
and at the end of that is a tiny little ring contour in this example right that's gonna be tricky isn't it to walk in poor viz maybe at night and hit that ring contour bang on over that distance why don't you have a look around that ring contour and see if there's a really good solid feature near that let's just say a stream junction that's 50 meters away that would be your attack point you do your bearing and pacing to that really good solid obvious feature that's much harder to miss than a tiny little ring contour you get to that junction and then you do a short bearing and pacing to get to your uh, target so there's just less margin for error in getting to the small feature I really like that one attack points even if you have to walk just a little bit further and then come back to it I think that's a solid uh, solid thing to do on, on ML assessments Catching features, that's kind of a nice obvious one, right? As part of your D for description when you're doing your four Ds, you're going to describe what the thing looks like when you get there, but also come up with something that's just past it. In, in the ideal world, that would be a nice stream. That's your best in the world catching feature, I reckon, because literally if you're walking along, having that nice time chatting to, to your mates or chatting to your group, whomever, and then suddenly you've got wet feet and you know you've gone too far exaggerating there because hopefully you'd see the stream first but it could be anything it could be that change in angle that's your catching feature oh it's going uphill now i've gone too far i've got to go back a little bit you've got those wet feet uh, whatever use your imagination but catching features uh, are great ones okay my favorite of all though and it's my favorite because it is the most simple and it's the easiest one to do hand railing if on a navigational leg I can handrail something i will and we're talking like linear features there so a stream would be ideal in really poor visibility, I might have to be two metres away from that stream. In good visibility, I can be a bit further away, whatever, as long as you can see it. And I'm literally, it's just following it. So handrailing is just a posh term for following a stream or any other linear feature. It's just pretty foolproof, isn't it? And that's what I like in navigation. The more simple and, and more foolproof it is, the more likely I am to get to my target in a nice, easy way, stress-free way. We don't like stress in these situations, do we? Other points that I've got on there's two more coming up, right? GPS. I flipping love a GPS, right? We all take our phones out into the hills with us because in a work sense, you'd be negligent if you didn't, wouldn't you? If you had a problem and you couldn't phone for help, well, it would be a silly idea, wouldn't it? So we all take our phone and we probably all take a battery pack as well because it's just a sensible thing to do, isn't it? In case you do run out of battery or get a bit low on battery. So there's loads of free apps you can download onto your phone that get you like a grid reference and stuff like that. If you buy your OS map over there, get a little scratch off panel these days, don't you? That you can then download the map onto your phone. Oh, it's just a no brainer for me. There's other methods um, of, of getting the maps on your phone. You can subscribe to View Ranger and other things as well. Um, and you can get standalone units, uh, GPS units, and they, they work really well. And, I'm not sure if we're at the point yet where you'd be negligent if there was an incident and you didn't have a GPS. I'm not sure, it's not for me to decide, is it? But I do think it's just a really good idea. You can't use them on your ML assessment because you've got to be able to do everything with your map and compass. But they're a great tool to use once you have passed, but we've got to keep practicing with the map and compass to make sure we don't have any skill fade going on. We can still do all we need to do with that. Yeah, I can almost see people on the other, other side of the camera saying, oh yeah, but what if your batteries run out in the GPS? Well, I said I've got a battery pack. Maybe that runs out as well. The phone dies for whatever reason. It gets too cold or it gets wet. Yeah, and that's ab absolutely that's a consideration. They're, they're not foolproof, but nor is a map. Look, oh, wind's blown it away. That's gone. Well, I've got another one in my rucksack. Okay, you know, I can get that out, but maybe I lose that one as well. They can get soaking wet and become unusable. I can, you know, my compass, I can leave that on a rock at lunchtime. Yeah, I've got two of those as well. Maybe we should carry two GPSs. I don't know. Uh, I would never want to not have a map and compass with me in the mountains. And I'd never want to lose the skills to use them really well. But GPS is a flipping ace. If you know how to use them, all right. If you don't know how to use them, learn because they're a good idea. Um, I used to work with this, uh, this old boy, Brian, absolute legend. Uh, he used to run uh, sort of ML courses and he would always write this on the whiteboard when we we're doing these kind of chats to ML groups he wouldn't write on the whiteboard actually he had this like paper flip chart thing do you remember them proper old school he used to take that everywhere with him right tatty old thing it was the chart not Brian himself uh, and on it at the end he'd always write C-A-S um, 
and see if anyone could guess what that stood for. And it was clutching at straws. That's got to be a valid navigational technique, hasn't it? Could be anything from you know following the, those cairns because they kind of look that they're going the right way. Could be following that bit of sheep track because we're trying to convince ourselves it's not a sheep track, it's the proper track. I've even in the past like seen a bit of litter and gone, oh yeah, someone's been this way before. Not this ever windy in the mountains and blows litter everywhere. Could be, oh, the wind's coming from that side. It's a westerly today, so that means that way is north. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a good one actually in a survival type sense. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, clutching at straws, I like that one. It's a good one to finish on. There'll be loads of other things that you could, um, tactics that you could use. So like I say, chuck them in the comments and see if you can come up with the slightly technical one that I do like that I haven't mentioned. It's one I use more in winter. Um, but yeah, see if you can guess what that one is. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, if you have, click the old like button, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Guess what else you can do? You can find us on Insta, you can find us on Facebook. I know I say this every time, but uh, thanks for putting up with me. Hope you've enjoyed it. More videos coming up very soon.